Welcome back to the channel. Today what we're doing is we're testing variable speed and how it impacts an espresso shot. So we've got the DF64V, so I've had this unit for ooh, say about a month now. Uh, been really enjoying it, having lots of fun with it. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to grind some coffee. I've got all my doses pre-weighed out. So they're all at about 22 grams, but we'll double check those before we, we do any grinding. Um, and I'm going to grind at 1000 RPM, see what extraction time I get. I'll keep one shot for TDSing and the other shot, shot I'll taste. Then we'll do it again at 600 RPM, 900, 1200, 15, 1800. And just see what happens um, with the espresso shot at the same grind setting, just changing the RPM speed. So we're using the San Remo U, which is um, it's a volumetric machine. So we should be fairly consistent as far as water flowing through the puck. Um, and yeah, we'll just start grinding and take shots and we'll take it from there and see how it all goes. So every, as I said, everything's pre-dosed out. Um, this is how I like to do my single dose. Uh, these little storage containers uh, used to be available at Kmart. So if anyone from Kmart Australia is watching this video, please bring these back. Uh, I love them. Um, it's just a nice way to single dose your coffee. It doesn't take up bench space because you can go upwards. Um, also great to just throw that whole lot in the freezer, take it out, take one off, and then off you go. Anyway, without further ado, so... So we've got 22.2. Um, with, with the DF64V, I recommend RDTing, um, especially if you're using a lighter roast coffee, because static becomes more uh, present on a lighter roast coffee than on your darker roast. Um, I always RDT anyway. I've been doing it on an EK43 for years, so it's just part of my my uh, the habit that I'm into. So. Um, normally, wouldn't recommend grinding at 1000 RPM, under 1000 RPM on DF64V uh, because you can stall the motor, uh, especially if it's a light roast coffee. The lower RPM is really designed more for your filter grinding. But today we're going to, feeling adventurous, we're going we're gonna to try it all. Anyway, here we go. Just tear that off. So once it finishes grinding, what I like to do is I increase the RPM to maximum. So we're up to 1800. Then I grab the magnetic chute um, and flick it like you would do on an EK43 when you flick the side just to get any coffee that might be uh, in the chute out. And if you wanted to, you could get, grab your brush and brush everything out if you really wanted to. Okay. So 22.2, so we've got everything out that we've put in, uh, we'll aim for 22 even, yep, so 22 even. Bit of WD team. Now I know some people do, some people don't, WDT, um, I'm going to be honest, most of the time I don't, um, but from time to time I do, but for the sake of this experiment we will. Okay, so I've marked all my cups up, so it's at 1000 RPM, 22 grams in. And off we go. So this should get us about, I think it's about 42 grams out.
Okay, so it seems to be running a bit slower. So I did dial this coffee in yesterday, so it looks like from yesterday and today um, it's changed our extraction a little bit, but anyway, it is what it is, we'll just move on with it. Okay, so that took 39 seconds and we got 38.1 grams out. So. 38.1 in 39 seconds. Okay, so keep a record of that. So there's the espresso shot. Now I know some people freak out with long extractions. Um, I'm actually okay with them. Um, I've had some amazing coffee that's been on a long, longer extraction, I've had some amazing coffee on short extraction, so um, I'm quite happy to follow wherever flavour is. Um, some sweetness up front. Body's okay. Very little acidity. Um, Bitterness kicking in a little bit on the back end. Okay, so that's our first shot at a thousand RPM. Now, if you're like me and you hate changing, uh, emptying your drip tray out on a regular basis, I always keep a a jug that I don't use and use that as my flush jug that way trip tray doesn't fill up as quickly and I don't have to empty it as, as often it's easier to empty that jug out okay so second shot this one's going to be at 600 rpm so Twenty two point two again on this one RDT um, at six hundred RPM. I highly recommend hot loading. So, if you're not sure what hot loading is, it means getting the burrs to spin before putting the coffee in. Don't put your coffee, then start the grinder. So start the grinder, then drop your, your coffee beans in. And yes, that's it running. So the San Remo U is actually louder than the DF64V um, at 600 RPM. Actually, I think it's louder at, at most of the RPM range. But anyway, it's a very quiet grinder. Um, Okay, so crank it up to 1800 RPM and then you would have seen then, as soon as you crank up the speed, it just forces some of that coffee that might be in the chute, a bit more pressure comes out and just pushes that down. Knock, 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 knock. And then if you really wanted to, you can brush out all your coffee. It's there. Twenty-two point four. So he must have emptied out some coffee that was in there previously. Okay, so let's get it down to 22. That's 22 even. WDT again. Just a little bit. Okay. 
Now the other thing that I like to use is actually a ripple tamp, so I don't know if you've had much experience with it, but I really like the ripple tamp. So locked in, there's our 600 RPM cup. And off we go. So this is extracting at a standard nine bar pressure. Although with the sand rimmer, you, you can adjust your pre-infusion, infusion pressure and post-infusion pressure. I've just gone standard nine bar, nothing too crazy, trying to replicate how most people would be brewing coffee at home, which would be nine bar. So that's taken 34 seconds and we've got 40, 42.3 grams out. Oops. So, did we say 42.3 grams out? So, four. Okay, take two. So, I had a bit of a technical glitch with my camera. Um, so, here we go again. Okay, so we've just done the second shot. So, that was at 600 RPM. Okay, next up, let's flush the group head. Next up, we are at the 900 RPM range. Make sure it grinds at 900. Yes, it is. Twenty-two point three grams. According to our trusty scales, two spirits of water. And the grind, crank up the speed, 1800. Knock, 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 knock. Just for consist consistency, seeing as we've done that for all the previous doses, 22.3. Okay, we're going to go for 22 even. WDT. falling down. Oh no! Lock her in. Cup, cup. Okay, off we go. Okay, that was 29 seconds and we got 42.4. So 42.4 at 29 seconds. Pop that away. It's for our TDS. Let that cool a bit. Okay. 
it's very smooth very very smooth a little bit of uh, brightness up front some nice level of acidity a lot of sweetness coming through um, as it's settling starting to get no sweetness is still there sweetness is still there that's very nice that's the that's been my favorite one so far okay so that was at 900 rpm okay so i'm going to try and crank through these things as quickly as possible so we're at 1200 rpm now crank up the speed 1800 knock knock Twenty-two. I wonder if we bellow a bit. Twenty-two one. But we're going to go for twenty-two even as we have for all the previous shots. No, it's not yet. So 30 seconds bang on and 42 grams out. So we have 42 grams out on 30 seconds. That goes in that pile, which is my tedious pile. Just let that cool just a little bit because I don't want to burn my tongue. I'll just prep for the next shot. very sweet very very sweet body's a bit more than the than the um, 900 sweeter than the 900 rpm not as bright as the 900 rpm but it's very sweet and that sweetness is just lingering I'd say like a medium type body um, not overly heavy, but very little acidity. Um, there's a little bit there, but yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Well, it's a tough one to call. I reckon. So that was very sweet. So uh, I quite like that, but I'm torn between the 900 and 1200 RPM at this stage. Anyway, more to go. Uh, next one's ready, set at 1500 RPM. Start the grinder up. Oh, better tear that off. Okay, knock, 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 knock. Ooh, so more retention at the higher RPM in the shoot. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a lot more coffee. That's a beautiful thing about the DF64V. You can just pull it all apart very easily uh, and get all your coffee out. 
Don't have to worry about exchange on the next grind because there will be so little of it, if any. Okay, 21.9, so a little bit short. See if we can maybe get some out on the bellow. Twenty-one point eight. Don't know how that happened. Okay, so twenty-one nine. So for the sake of Consistency, I'm going to throw a couple more beans in there, drop that back down to 1500. Okay, that should be everything out. 22.2 So what you see on the um, higher RPM I don't know, look, this could have been because I'd moved the, the dosing cup back and forth but it did look like it had clumped up in the dosing cup not coming out of the grinder um, but just sitting there but I think that might have to do more with me moving the dosing cup back and forth than the grind itself. Okay. Yeah, for those wondering, the cups we're using are Acme. I really like using these cups. Uh, they're just the right size for what I want to do with them. Uh, but they've got a range of cups. This video is not sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. I just thought I'd give them a shout out. Um, and I'll probably put a link in the description below to their website if you're interested in their cups, but I really like using them. Anywho, here we go. Okay, so that was 27 seconds. Uh, so that's interesting. And we've got 42.9 grams out. 42.9 at 27 seconds. So, at 1000 RPM, we had 38.1 grams out. 600, we had 42.3. 900, 42.4. 1200, we had 42. 1500, 42.9. And then the time went 39 seconds, 34 seconds, 29 seconds, 30 seconds, 27 seconds. Interesting. Okay, I'll let that cool a little bit. I might see if I can redo the um, 1000 RPM one again because that just seems odd. That's a lot more mellow. That's the city is almost non-existent there. Bodies, I'd say it's still a medium body, I wouldn't say it's a heavy body. <sighs> Nothing really. Oh, a little bit of brightness now, as, it, as it's called a little bit. There's no bitterness. Sweetness is dulled down, it's not as sweet as the um, as the 1200 or the 900 RPM. Look, it's not a bad coffee. It's just 
not the best one that we've had in this experiment. So that's the 1500 RPM. Okay, here we go, the last one, 1800. Actually, no, we'll do one more at the thousand. So, second last one. Now, you can see at the higher RPM, static really starts to increase. Might give this one a bellow. There we go. And drink. Yeah, so what I was saying earlier about the seemed to clump more on the 1500, that wasn't evident on the 1800, so I suspect that had more to do with me moving that dosing cup back and forth. Okay, so I missed that extraction time, damn it. I'll have to look at back on the videos. Uh, weight wise was 44.5 grams. It's 44.5. I'm gonna have to replay it to get an extraction time on that one, so my apologies for that, but I'll flush it up on the screen. Uh, let that cool. Okay, we'll redo that thousand RPM. So you can see, now that we've gone back to 1000 RPM, you can see the static around the exit of the chute is a lot less than it was at 15 and 1800. And we're at 22. Okay, let's try the 1800. Very smooth, very smooth at the 1800. The brightness is not there. Very little acidity, very little brightness. Body's a bit more, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say hugely more, just a little bit more. Sweetness is there. And now as it's lingering, there's a little bit of sourness coming in. Sourness has, has gone away now. Sweetness is still lingering. So, yeah, look, there has been a difference in, in each of the um, speeds. Um, RPM speeds. It's 1800. I'd have to pick, I think, I think I'd have to pick, if I had to pick one, I'd have to pick the 1200 RPM, I think. It was just, it was like really sweet. Really enjoyed it. Anyway, let's give the 1000 RPM another go. See if we get the same results as previously. Oh, where'd it go? Little espresso cups. So if anyone's wondering, these are from Premier Tatsu. So I like the espresso, the cups as well. They do some lovely cups. More of your traditional style cups. Um, but I really like them as well. I'll put a link in the description below. So um, everyone gets the same amount of love.
Okay, here we go. Okay, so I think that first one was a bit of an outlier. So that was 29 seconds. So it's 29 seconds. And it's 43.3 grams out. So 43.3 grams. So I don't know what happened to that very first thousand RPM, but that seemed very odd. So if we look at the latest thousand RPM shot, uh, 29 seconds, 43.3 grams, 600 RPM, 34 seconds, 42.3 grams, 900 RPM, 29 seconds, 42.4 grams, uh, 1200 RPM, 30 seconds, 42 grams So we see the grams the output dropping um, Then we go to 1500 rpm The time drops to 27 seconds, but the grams output goes up to 42.9 and then we go at 1800 rpm It was I can't remember how many seconds, but it'll be flashing up on the screen now and we got 44.5 grams out. So, let's taste this last one. Yeah, interesting. So this is it's sitting, definitely sitting in between the 900 and the 1200 RPM. A um, little bit sweeter than the 900, not as sweet as the 1200, not as bright as the 1200, but not as, sorry, it's brighter than the 1200, but not as bright as the 900. Body wise, again, a medium body. No negative aftertaste. There's no bitterness there. There's no sourness kicking in. Um, and that being said, look, all of these espressos tasted good. It's, it's not, it's, I wouldn't, if I was served any of these at a cafe, I wouldn't have sent it back or wouldn't have said that was a terrible coffee. They all tasted good. But when you're comparing them side by side, well then, yeah, you can pick up some differences. It's like when you go to, um, electrical store and you see plasma, th oh, sorry, um, flat screen TVs all across on the wall and you can see the difference in quality but you take any one of those home and have them on their own you're probably happy with the quality of any of those TVs so similar situation here when you compare them back to back side by side yes there's a couple that's, that stand out more than the others um, but I wouldn't say any of them were a bad espresso they all tasted nice they all were pleasant to drink to, 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 to sip on so that's it for the brewing. I'm going to wait for these coffees to cool. Okay, so finished doing the TDS uh, readings. So what we have is the first um, shot at 1000 RPM. Uh, Sorry, the first shot was 1000 RPM that ran for 39 seconds. We had a TDS of 11.52, extraction yield 20.67. The 1000 1, RPM that I did at the end uh, that ran for 29 seconds, so 10 seconds quicker, <clears throat> gave us a TDS of 10.72 with an extraction yield of 19.24. Uh, the 600 RPM, 11.12 TDS, extraction yield 22.16. 900 RPM, 10.52 TDS, 21.01. Um, 1200 RPM, 10.02 TDS, 19.82 uh, extraction yield. 1500 RPM, 10.87 TDS, with a 22.01 uh, extraction yield. And the 1800 RPM had a TDS of 10.02 with an extraction yield of 21. So 
for me, you know, when I went back and tasted them as the coffee's cooled, uh, my, my pick would be the 1200 RPM. Um, probably followed by the 900 and closely followed by the 1000, that one there. Um, the interesting thing, however, is, and this is why I, I, I don't really focus on TDS numbers because um, a lot of people get hung up on them and think that flavor is determined by the numbers, which it's not. Um, TDS is just a guide to tell you if something's happened in a change you've made in the coffee. Um, so if we look at the 1800 RPM and the 900 RPM, the TDS numbers uh, were 10.52 TDS, 10.02, extraction yield 21.01%, 21%. So if you look at it from an extraction yield, you go, okay, well these two should be similar. Or they weren't. Um, that was nicer than that. Um, and it's probably fourth in the lineup. So for me, if I was to put them in order, I'd go the 1200, the 900, the 1000, the 1800, the 1500, then the 600. So look, these are the results. Take them with a grain of salt. You know, everyone's got different palate, everyone's got different preferences. Um, these are just my findings, my preferences. Um, there's no right or wrong. Um, so, yes, yeah, the, the conclusion in, in all of this is, does RPM make a difference to coffee? Yes, it does. Um, so, you know, we've got seven different uh, coffees that we've brewed. With seven different flavors. Now, would you get seven different flavors if you brewed seven coffees at the same RPM? Probably. Um, would it be as extreme as here? Maybe, maybe not. I uh, don't know. But probably not. They're probably closer together. Um, but RPM does make a difference, and, and we saw it with extraction times. So forget about that first one, which went for 39 seconds. Let's look at that one. So it went from 29 seconds to 34 seconds back to 29 as the RPMs increased, then 30 seconds, then as we've got higher, we've got to uh, uh, 27 seconds. So, uh, you know, there is a difference. Um, would most people pick it up in the cup? Maybe, maybe not. Um, would you notice it if it was just present, the coffee was presented on its own? Probably not, um, but side by side, yeah, you can tell the difference. Anyway, um, as I said earlier, make sure you give us a like and subscribe and yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye.